This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, O Christ. A man was having trouble getting his neighbor to keep his chickens fenced in. The neighbor kept talking about his chickens being great creatures, and as such, they had the right to go where they wanted. The man was having no luck keeping the chickens out of his garden, out of his flower beds, and he had tried everything. Two weeks later, on a visit, a friend noticed his flower beds were doing great. The flowers were beginning to bloom. So the friend asked him, how he managed to keep the birds away. How did you make your neighbor keep his hens in his own yard? He said, one night I hid a half dozen eggs under my flower bed, and the next day I let my neighbor see me gather them. I wasn't bothered after that. So Jesus talks about himself using the metaphor of a hen. A hen who gathers her chicks under her wings to protect them. Herod is described as a fox by Jesus. The Pharisees come to Jesus and say, get away, Herod wants to kill you. Now the Pharisees in Luke, Jesus looks at them both as an enemy and sometimes though, they seem to be friendly. I'm not sure here whether their intentions are to warn Jesus that they care about him or they just want him to be quiet and to not speak. Jesus says, go and tell that fox for me. Calls Herod a fox. Now we think of foxes as kind of noble animals. You know, they're kind of, we think of them as being wise, um, maybe beautiful animals, predators. But Jesus uses this word, and the Greek word can be translated fox or jackal. So Jesus is talking about a predator. Herod is a predator for sure, but an unimpressive one. One that really one one shouldn't be afraid of. The Herod family, the Herodians, were people who were thirsty for power. And, uh, but yet there seemed to be paranoia. Paranoia that there were others who were going to take away their power. And of course, this was Jesus. Jesus was casting out demons, doing these miracles. Herod heard about him and apparently wanted him put to death. So we could call this story the fox and the hen. And of course, we probably would rather identify with a fox. A fox is a crafty animal, a predator. A hen is a bird that lays eggs, but a domestic helpless bird. If a fox and a hen faced off each other, the hen would be quickly dead. Jesus is not afraid of Herod. Jesus knows his power will fade away. 
And we would know nothing about Herod, about the Herodian dynasty, if not for Jesus. If not for Jesus and his mission to go to the cross and die and rise again, which started this movement called Christianity, we would not even know of Herod if not for Jesus. So Jesus knew that his power was greater than Herod's because Jesus' power was about eternal power, not temporal power, but eternal power. And Jesus says, I'm performing cures on day one and day two. On the third day, I must finish my work. And what's finishing his work on the third day? We know, rising from the dead. So Jesus' power, though self-sacrificial, is much more powerful than Herod. Herod wanted to have power. He was afraid of the truth, and Jesus knew the truth, spoke the truth, and lived the truth by going all the way, by self-sacrificing on the cross so that he would be king of kings and lord of lords for eternity. Jesus laments about Jerusalem in the prophetic tradition. The prophets like Jeremiah also lamented about Jerusalem. Jerusalem was God's highest intention. Jerusalem was the hill upon which all nations would come. God's kingdom would be present, and Jerusalem always let God down. And so we Christians see this salvation history, this big arc of history, that the failure of Jerusalem, the failure of God's people, led to Jesus becoming present with us. God present in Jesus Christ. So Jesus laments as a prophet would, Jerusalem, how I long to take you, to gather you under my wings, but you were not willing. Do we choose the side of power, even paranoid power? We like greatness, don't we? And we like power. We're impressed by power. Even our buildings, our powerful buildings, you, Look at this building, it's so huge and it's like a fortress. Of course, it's like uh, a ship upside down, like the, uh, the churches have always been modeled uh, from which we get nave, nave and navy come from the same, same Latin root. A powerful structure, we take comfort and power, don't we? I wonder what Jesus would say to us if he came today and saw the buildings that we built instead of being out on the street and working for justice and righteousness. Well, we do that too, don't we? And believe me, I love this building. I love it. It is so gorgeous. I love coming in here during the day. But that's not Jesus' power. Jesus' power is the power of the cross, the power of self-sacrifice, the power that is not temporal, not of one age, but of ages upon ages into eternity. That's what we celebrate. That's the power that we are plugged into when we gather under the wings of the hen. The Apostle Paul talks about how so many of his followers in Philippi want to follow the way of, of doing works, the works of righteousness, the uh, works of um, circumcision and, and things like this, rather than trusting in the cross, trusting in the cross. Paul's message so often is, the cross is where the power of God is found in the weakness of God. In the weakness, God's weakness is more powerful than human power. God's, God's 
folly is, is more wise than human wisdom, Paul says. And yet we go after power. We go after temporal power. We are impressed by it. Jesus saw through Herod. Herod was a paranoid leader. So many world leaders like that today, yes, who want to be seen as powerful, but they're really weak. We are part of that eternal power, the power that has no end. I'm always struck by the Star Wars movies when uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi does the power of self-sacrifice. He gives himself up and uh, Luke Skywalker sees him and he says, from now on, I will be more powerful. Well, that's fiction, but it's fiction that's based on that prototype of Jesus and the self-sacrifice he did for us. We gather under the wings of the hen because we are marked with a cross of Christ in baptism. Jesus longs for all people to gather under his wings. And that's why he stretched out his arms on the cross. He stretched out his wings in order to bring all, all his beloved people under him. Will you gather under his wings? Amen.